Hello and welcome to The Health Advocate. I am Matt Dinsmore, uh, nurse practitioner and host of the show, uh, which is pretty much what the intro already said. So now we've already covered that again. Uh, I'm going to tell you what this week is about, and it's about uh, direct primary care. We're actually three weeks into a four-week series, and for this week, we're going to get an employer perspective on how direct primary care can be uh, a model as a medical benefit uh, for employers to offer their employees. Uh, week one, we got a provider's perspective and talked about kind of the 101 of direct primary care. And week two, we got a patient's perspective of direct primary care. So now we're going to talk to the big dogs, the CEOs and owners of the companies, and see why they would offer this as a model. All right, I'm going to introduce uh, some of the people who have direct primary care. Off to my left is Georgia Gilly with Northtown Insurance. Uh, they do insurance, if that's not um, obvious, yes. Uh, and she's kind of the human resource director as well as several other things within uh, the organization. Off to her left is Christy Witte with Principal Research Solutions, and they do clinical trials, correct, right? And then off to the left uh, of her is Mike Krause with Total Security. He installs security things and works as a, um, a bodyguard at a nightclub, if you didn't know that. I'm just joking, he doesn't, but uh, he could. He could. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to any, mini, mighty, mo, catch a tiger, bag a toe. Who's going to go first for the question? Christy, I'm going to go with you. I hope you're ready. Okay. I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> how did you hear about direct primary care and uh, kind of what led you to the decision of offering this to your employees? I, I heard about direct primary care actually originally as concierge medicine, okay. uh, the, old, the old title, and working in the healthcare industry. I, I had heard about all these different models. Um, I myself was very dissatisfied with the current primary care model, hmm. um, which led me to start checking out some different options. Mm -hmm. So then you're Googling, Google, 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 right? And then you come across- and Podcasting. Uh, and, oh, okay. Right. And, and, and so was direct primary care different than the concierge model that you saw, or this was like, hey, this is a local version of a concierge? I think it's, I think it's more aptly named oh, than, okay. than concierge. I think concierge got this, um, this feeling that it was an elite, mm -hmm. that it was something that was out of reach for the, the right. average consumer. Right. Um, so I, I think, it, again, it's just more aptly named that that it really is direct with your primary care. Right. Um, so. Mm -hmm. And uh, and maybe for those kind of catching up with direct primary care, being a monthly membership model where you still pay kind of like a monthly membership fee like you would insurance, but you're offering kind of primary care services, not catastrophic coverage necessarily, but access to a primary care physician. Now, Mike, you had a fully insured product, right? You had, for your employees and yourself, you had yes. the typical fully insured health insurance, and but you made a switch to direct primary care and a cost sharing network. Why? Why would you leave something, you know, traditional and have the comfort in that and go to something new like this? I, it depends on your definition of comfort. It okay. was never comfortable making the premium payments that we did. Okay. I mean, for over the last several years we've seen an increase in premiums and decrease in quality of care mm -hmm. and I mean our deductibles went up and our care went down and it was kind of an always a uh, thought of being very apprehensive to go to the doctor because you never knew how much it was going to cost and then you go in and then you just you feel your number and you just go in and get processed as quickly as possible and it I didn't feel comfortable uh, my employees weren't getting the full benefit I mean yeah. we pay full premiums yeah. for medical and dental. Sure. Wow. So, you know, they were going in, of course, the co-pays were going up as well. So you'd go in at the, I mean, you're paying a premium and yes. then you're paying a co-pay. Yeah. So astronomical expenses and low um, quality, quality care. Yeah. So, so I would say now we switched in this particular program, um, we're saving $600 a month overall. Wow. And our, our costs have gone down, which is significant. But our quality of care has just skyrocketed. Hmm. I mean, I was there for a simple test. Uh, well, not a simple test. It was a, a what would you call that? A, a blood test and a, what do you um, like an annual screening exam or something like correct. that? Yeah, I went in for that, and I think you guys spent 45 minutes with me. Hmm. Um, I mean, I didn't feel rushed, and I, I, I mean, I felt cared for. So that makes a difference. Hmm. And you know, <laughs> what does that ever happen? Uh, yeah. uh, never. So, yeah. so that, that was an easy switch to do that. Right. And um, I mean, it's, it's different, it's unique. 
but it's the way that I would recommend people go. Right. I think it's really, it's an interesting perspective because I feel like in, employers are obviously cost conscious of the medical benefit they're offering their employees. They want to offer something that is truly a benefit and they want to make sure that they're getting a you know, bang for their buck in, in what they're offering. And so what I'm hearing you saying is that you're noticing these premiums are increasing and you're wondering where are these supposed benefits that should be coming from this? Like, sure, I have coverage, but my care is poor and I call in to get an appointment and it takes, you know, who knows how long. And so that kind of began this process of you beginning to, to switch, I guess, to something it, different and making the leap. Right. It was actually, you know, we'd had conversations for over a period of several months with yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And we just finally got to the point that uh, the cost was so prohibitive that, I mean, I don't say that we can't afford to pay those premiums, but it's just not right to pay for something that really doesn't have good quality for it. Sure. And, and what we found is, is especially the accessibility. My wife called to get, I mean, had a question, you answered before eight o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and was able to get a simple prescription done instead, you know, and, and, and affordable mm -hmm. prescriptions as opposed to, I mean, some prescriptions are just absolutely ridiculously priced. Sure. And you have worked out a, a payment program or a, a cost savings program that we've been able to utilize and, and save hundreds of dollars there. Yeah. Along with the premiums that we're saving on. Sure. Interesting. All right. So, um, you know, Georgia, when you, when you brought this to your employees, right, would you have, I don't know how many employees now, five, six, seven, that's it. Um, one, what was their impression when you brought it to them? And then maybe two, what, what did you think their impression was going to be? And then when you did bring it to them, what, what were they saying at first before you decided to make the jump? Uh, everyone was a little skeptical at first, which I was too when we had our first message of it's so different. How do we make people feel confident in a change that is so different right. um, and wanting to save cost for the company, but let people know that it is in their best interest mm -hmm. that we're not trying to change something just for saving cost, but this is going to help you all. Um, so everybody was skeptical at first, but I jumped in myself and started using it right away. Mm -hmm. So I was able to say, this is how, what my experience is, this is how much it's saving me personally. Yeah. And we're all using it more because unlike the other health care, you didn't want to use it because you have a big deductible or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, so we're all using it more. We're, mm -hmm. we're being better taken care of. Uh, and so a lot of people just jumped in with that too, with just trusting us and our, I had you come in and that helped mm -hmm. ease people's mind as well. Sure. And, um, and they're using it themselves yeah. as well. So some people that haven't been to the doctor in a long time are going. Good. And that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> so it's being yeah. used. We're saving mm -hmm. on the premium and they're seeing the benefit more. Sure. Yeah. I, I think it has this like, it's too good to be true. Right. Kind of a thing. Like, okay, so wait, you're telling me that I'll go in there and they won't. That all I, I have to pay, pay is anything. this. Yeah. Like, and okay. And my employer's paying for it. So I literally, mm -hmm. I go in there, it's nothing. Right. And, you, and I can yeah. go in that same day. And I can go yeah. in every day yeah. and still they're gonna charge me nothing. No, yeah. we're not gonna charge you. Okay, and if I get labs done and they're resulted in the clinic and a procedure done, EKG, sutures, I'm still not built. No, you're still not there. And they're like, no, no, no. Yeah. Like how does it, cause no, how do you keep the lights What's on? The you know, right. yes, yeah. I, you know, how many times you begin. And why isn't uh, everybody that? doing this if it's that sure. easy? Like <laughs> yeah. we're, we're part of a secret club. It's fine. Just sure. go with it. Yeah. No. Uh, listen to episode one if you want to <laughs> yeah. know that answer. Yeah, uh, yeah be, because it is, it's kind of this very, interesting model and kind of a take back. So to be kind of a pioneer uh, for your employees seems to be making a difference. Like, yeah. hey, uh, I did go in there and they didn't build it. Yeah, like be able to say I had a full blood panel mm -hmm. workup. I've gone in for migraine medication. I've gone in for things that would cost me hundreds of dollars or I wouldn't be able to get in, like Mike said. Yeah. Um, I'd have to make an appointment for three days from now. Okay, well, my migraine will be gone by then. Yeah. So, but I need to be in, I need to get taken care of now. Yeah. And that's uh, been, been an option, mm -hmm. so. Well, that's, uh, you know, I, uh, for the, for the viewers at home, I want this to be fair, you know, mm -hmm. and so it, we can't just be looking at this with rose colored glasses. There's drawbacks, you know, to, to offering direct primary care as an employer to your employees. What, what do you think are potential drawbacks or, or cautions that employers should have when they're considering this model a, as a medical benefit, either in conjunction with insurance, cost sharing networks, or, or just alone as a medical benefit? Is there anything, this is a question for anybody that wants to take it. I think um, making sure they understand that they do still need another safety mm -hmm. net type coverage. Okay. Yeah, it's right? not a full package in itself. Sure. Yeah. This is this is what most of us are always going to need, but there's always mm -hmm. the what if. Hmm. Um, 
and then the the only drawback I can think of would be that it's not this huge network of providers in Spokane right. where if I'm just really not clicking with one, I can just switch to the other. Right. Um, it's like your membership's to this clinic. Right. And right. just this clinic. Or mm -hmm. there are right. three or four clinics that are within their network or something like that. But Yeah, but ultimately yeah. making sure they understand, like I said, they do need some other kind of safety net. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think most of the time from an employee's perspective, somebody says, hey, here's your medical benefit and I'm paying for it. I think, yeah, the risk is that people are like, oh, okay, I got health insurance, right. you know, mm -hmm. and to say that this isn't health insurance, it'll cover maybe 79% of the care you'll need in your lifetime, but it doesn't cover like heart attacks or surgery or something. So to still walk them through that process but, right, would make sense. But again, like she said, having you come into the office and sit and take the time to talk with each individual person as far as you know, how's this going to work for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the the reaction we got was overwhelmingly positive. They mm -hmm. were actually, um, they were even more appreciative than than mm -hmm. I thought. You know, I knew mm -hmm. I had this elite team that deserved the best benefits. Sure. I can't. I couldn't afford to give them mm -hmm. the benefit that was ultimately not a good benefit. Mm -hmm. Sure. That was never going to pay for anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so so the. Um, the perspective for your employees has generally been positive and it's been a benefit that's been utilized for the most part amongst mm -hmm. your I know members. for sure we've had better attendance because of it, because of the access to care when needed. Mm -hmm. People have been able to show up to work when they might not have been able to before. And are, your, are you paying for your employees or are your employees paying for any I of that? So even though it's free to them, they still, it's all, I don't, you know, they're still utilizing this benefit. Cause I mean, people have insurance and they still don't go in to get their primary care exam. Like you feel like you're pulling teeth in order to get them into mm -hmm. an appointment. What is it about this model that's increasing? I'm not sure I can answer this question. That's increasing utilization. I, I think I can. I, yeah. you're the patient is the customer in this mm -hmm. model, mm -hmm. which other otherwise, I mean, people would like to think the patient's the customer. Every primary care out there would like to think that their patient is their customer, but they're not. Their mm. insurance company is, yeah. and the insurance company dictates what will be done during that visit. Sure. What, you know, I I had an interaction with my long-term primary care physician that I adored. Um, she traveled the journey of breast cancer with me. Mm -hmm. I went in for my annual, and she walked in, promptly sat down, and turned her back to me at the computer mm. and then starts clicking off all the different health metrics that she's required to cover by either the you know the network she's part of or the insurance company this mm -hmm. or that and mm -hmm. when she got to the one that said if you had your mammogram that's when I just went really mm. turn around look at me you know me mm -hmm. we went through this together mm. um and that, that was kind of the final straw for me as far as I'm not the customer in this room mm. Mm -hmm my insurance company is and she's spending all that time checking all these all these boxes um to make them happy mm -hmm. and there was no value for me whatsoever in that visit mm. well a drawback can be that there's just one office here to go to or one doctor but that's also the benefit it's not i have to don't have to see who what doctor is covered in my network mm. and hunt them down and see what people think and who do i decide on with hundreds of options sure. it's just one yeah i just need to call that one number mm -hmm. get into who is available when it works for my schedule mm -hmm. and that's it so there's just such an ease of use with it yeah um it doesn't make it so complicated sure yeah that's uh, uh kind of keep it simple stupid or yeah. what's the uh, yeah, guess. paralysis yeah. by analysis kind yes. of thing. Yeah. like you know you have too many options too right? many options yeah so it's just like okay i don't have to it takes a lot of the work out of it mm -hmm. But and let me get your perspectives, you know, HR director and both, you know, co-owners of your companies. Um, by show of hands, uh, do you find it difficult, or maybe just CS, I guess, or not, but do you find it difficult to recruit high quality employees? Do you feel like there's um, a need or desire for that? Okay. Attract and retain okay. the best. Yeah. I was gonna, well, and then my follow-up question is, is it hard to retain? If you find somebody, do you find it's hard to retain them? Um, or do you feel like, no, man, once we get them in here, we usually can keep them happy. It's just hard to get them through the door. Or do you feel like, well, the second challenge is retaining them. I'm kind of assuming it is, but mm -hmm. um, do you find that to be true, that re retention is equally as difficult in your field respectively um, as it is? I think it always needs to be on your radar, mm -hmm. right? It's, yeah. it's evolving. Mm -hmm. You sure. always mm -hmm. need to make sure that you're kind of keep your finger on the pulse of mm -hmm. what every, where everybody's at, what everybody wants. Yeah. Um, 
so it's it's definitely part of the equation. But but being able to offer, I, mean, I guess maybe the, what you're trying to get to is the fact that this is a benefit that could keep them happy and keep them with you. Right. Because it's, it's something that's really unique and different, mm -hmm. and they're really truly getting a value to it, as opposed to, I mean, when you when every time they would go to the doctor, they would come complain about a copay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it used to be twenty. Now it's forty. No, it went up to fifty. Oh no, Al! Actually, all of it's going towards your deductible now. Yeah. So you're paying a hundred or two hundred dollars. Where's the benefit? Right. So, so I think it does you know, kind of lean towards retention, and, mm -hmm. and and they would you know have a, a a better feeling towards you as an employer if you're offering that as a benefit. Sure. I mean, and that's a benefit. Yeah. That we're offering. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think what you said, Chrissy, was really interesting too. That it's you know, um, that people within your company are as much. Uh, you know, we've talked before that they're as much family as they are employees, right? And so you want to be able to offer something that's valuable, not just for the sake of saying I'm offering something, but to really offer them a high quality product. Yeah, and to, well, you know, be, because we're healthcare providers, we also, yeah. we, we're a little more picky. We know what we mm -hmm. want. We know mm -hmm. what the pitfalls are. Yeah, sure. Um, I was, I was shocked that um, they were so appreciative of it and so happy with the program. I, I believe two of them signed their spouses up immediately, mm -hmm. um, which we don't cover. We cover employee only. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, if they want to add spouses and children, they can do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it was as soon as they talked to you and really went, wow, there is no catch. Mm -hmm. um, they, they wanted this for their whole family. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, great. I, you know, I think 50% of uh, the companies out in the Spokane area are considered small business. And it's very difficult for small businesses to offer a medical package and benefit, not because it just cuts in their bottom line and they can't, you know, have their Lamborghini now. It's just, you know, literally to keep the lights on, the medical benefits are so expensive, they can't offer that. And for some, uh, uh, sitting even at this table, direct primary care has been an option uh, to offer a medical benefit for their, for their employees that they truly care for uh, without kind of breaking the bank. Uh, I want to thank uh, the three of you for coming and giving your opinions and sharing. And uh, I just encourage the viewers to um, tune in next week as we'll be in week four and getting the perspective of an insurance agent, an insurance broker on direct primary care and how it can pair with some interesting uh, insurance models. So we're not, direct primary care is not anti-insurance necessarily. There's some really interesting products um, out there that will try to get a perspective on how they can pair and help save employers uh, save money and still get the high quality care of direct primary care. Thank you for tuning in and hopefully we'll see you next week. I'm Matt Dinsmore with The Health Advocate signing out and the lights will go out in one, two, three. Ask the host a question, recommend a guest, or hear this program again on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or SpokaneTalksMedia.com.